Training camp is just around the corner for the Philadelphia Eagles and there are just a matter of weeks until Eagles football is back on our screens once again. And we've come a long way since the end of last season, since the Eagles were drastically over the salary cap, since there was a monumental mountain for Howie Roseman and the front office staff to climb. Back in January, the Eagles were set to lose plenty of key contributors from the season before to free agency and many questions arise as to whether or not they had the right assets and the right amount of cap space to bring in suitable replacements and sustain a level of excellence that has been associated with Doug Peterson and Howie Roseman named since 2016. Now if you look at the roster as it stands today many will argue that it rivals the Super Bowl winning roster of 2017 but how did the Eagles go from a team that was depleted by injuries that had 39 separate injuries show up on their report throughout the course of last season, a team who lacked cap space and was set to lose plenty of talent to free agency to where we are today. My name is Liam Jenkins and this is everything you need to know about the 2019 offseason. Before we get started though guys, if you're new around here and haven't yet subscribed, make sure you hit that big red button because we want to build the biggest base of Philadelphia sports fans possible. If you enjoy this sort of content, leave your comments down below, sharing your opinions on today's video and don't forget you can go to phillysportsnetwork.com for daily doses of Philadelphia sports content from myself and all of our writers at PSN. Alright, so let's roll this all the way back to January of 2019. The first thing the Eagles did was fill out their roster. They had to bring in those guys on futures deals. Now, the players with asterisks next to their name are the guys that are no longer on the team and were waived subsequently, but there are some names to note here. Let's take former Calgary Stampede linebacker Alex Singleton, for example. He was voted the CFL's most outstanding defensive player after setting a new league record in tackles, along with several other records last year. Just one one year before that, a then rookie Alex Singleton grew into a starter. He was named an all-star in both of his CFL campaigns. Singleton wasn't the only former Stampede, though. Meet younger brother of Sony Michelle, Mark and Michelle. The versatile 5'11 receiver has a skill set that would intrigue any NFL scout, and with just one year left in his rookie deal, the Eagles were quick to snatch him up. This could be a guy that has intense special teams value, especially as a returner. Then there are names like Joe Ostman and Braxton Miller, two guys who were on the Eagles scout team last year, both of them taking on roles of key players the Eagles would face and impressing the coaching staff along the way. There is every chance to believe that Joe Ostman can take that step up in 2019 and there's reason to be hopeful that the former Texans wide receiver Braxton Miller can do the same as well. Next up, the Eagles brought back linebacker Paul Warrillow after a 2018 season that never was. Rorolo originally signed a prove-it contract last offseason after a strong year in Detroit where he started 8 of 13 games played, registering 20 tackles, 1 pass defence and a fumble recovery. But a torn ACL in the offseason forced him to miss this year and he now gets a second chance in a linebacker corps which at the time was quite thin. It was preparing for the loss of Jordan Hicks, so bringing back a middle linebacker with experience made plenty of sense, especially considering how the offseason would pan out moving forward. And finally, the Philadelphia Eagles reworked the contract of Rodney McLeod, the safety who saw an injury end his 2018 season as well. And this isn't the first time he's reworked his deal. He did exactly the same thing in 2017, but this freed up a crucial amount of around $5 million in cap space. Originally, McLeod was going to account for $9 million worth of cap space this year. So the Eagles, instead of losing him or risking facing a depleted secondary, decided to just rework that contract. McLeod was more than happy to do so, giving the team some much needed leverage over the coming months. The first port of call in the month of February though was dealing with some coaching changes. The Eagles lost Chris Wilson, their defensive line coach, and instead of going elsewhere, decided to promote from within, giving Philip Daniels the reign. And after just one year of Gunter Brewer being in town for the Eagles, he moved on as well, meaning they had to promote Carson Walsh at wide receiver coach. One of the more intriguing hirings of this batch though was Matt Burke as a special advisor to Jim Schwartz. Now the two do have a history. They originally worked together in Tennessee when Schwartz was a defensive coordinator there and Burke remained with the Titans throughout the reign of Jim Schwartz following him to Detroit when he was eventually hired as a head coach so it seems the two have a lot in common share the same basic philosophies and this could be seen as a potential heir to the throne this is the third time that Burke has worked with Jim Schwartz but he's coming off a very disappointing run with Miami so is there more to this than meets the eye I don't know but shadowing Jim Schwartz surely can't be the worst thing in the world 
Then came the re-signing of specialists Rick Lovato and Jake Elliott. This one many saw coming. Lovato has helped Elliott on his way to some impressive franchise records, including the most field goals of 50 plus yards, and notably made the two longest field goals in a Super Bowl by a rookie last February. Elliott has interestingly kicked and converted the same amount of field goals, that's 26 of 31, in both seasons with the Eagles, and he also recorded a season-high 12 points in the huge win over the Rams. But it was March where things really picked up for this team, especially in the way of contract extensions. We've heard for quite some time that the Eagles build from the ball out, and this year was no exception. Brandon Graham signed a three-year extension while the team focused heavily on the offensive line. There were some concerns that Jason Kelsey may indeed debate retirement, but not only did they retain him on a two-year deal, they kept Isaac Sayamalo around on a three-year extension as well. Now, Sayamalo was a third-round pick for the Eagles and has seen time at left guard but more recently moved to back up center last preseason an experiment which didn't exactly go to plan just yet Sam Marlowe then returned home to the left guard spot, showed dramatic improvement and has now shown that versatility to maybe, just maybe, one day take over from Jason Kelsey. But it gives the Eagles some optionality along that offensive line. They keep their entire starting five from the Super Bowl win two years ago. So that same starting five in 2017 will be the same starting five in 2019. That speaks volumes about sustaining excellence and with Jeff Stoutland at the helm, you can make the case that every offensive Offensive lineman should be a Pro Bowl offensive lineman or ranked among the very best at their position. There is Jason Peters, who not only is a future Hall of Famer, but somehow, somehow agreed to take a pay cut. Words I never thought I would ever associate with the bodyguard, but here we are. Peters helped free up even more cap space for the Eagles so they could continue building in Howie Roseman's vision. Then the fun really began. The Eagles attacked free agency and brought in Malik Jackson from Jacksonville on a three-year contract, giving Fletcher Cox his future running mate. Staying along the defensive line, Vinnie Curry came home after what he called was a one-year hiatus in Tampa Bay and does so on a much cheaper deal than he originally was with the Eagles. He signed a huge contract extension, one he arguably didn't really pay up to the cash value to, and then Tampa Bay gave him even more money, and then he comes back on a much cheaper deal. So a huge bang for your buck sign in there for the Eagles. Linebacker LJ Fort helped solidify a position where the team were again looking to lose Jordan Hicks. And Fort brings with him some versatility as a special teamer and someone that can match up against big tight ends in man coverage. And even at this point, with a linebacker corps of Bradham, LJ Fort, and either Camus Grugier Hill and Nate Jerry, along with Paul Warlow who resigned, it's suddenly not the weakness that it once was. Ronald Darby re-signs with the team on a one-year prove-it deal. It's likely he's gone in 2020, but with such a plethora of young talent at cornerback, that's not the end of the world. Darby could be destined for a big year if he can stay healthy. That's going to be the wild card, but he could be destined for a big season. And given how much the Eagles are actually paying for Ronald Darby, it's certainly a bang for your buck move. Andrew Sendejo ended his 2018 with injury, but he starts his 2019 in Midnight Green. Now, there are some theories he could be cut in order for the Eagles to attain a future fourth round compensatory pick, but I don't think that's going to be the case, at least as of right now. Going into 2018, Sendejo was coming off of a contract year, and it's hard to see him not living up to the, at least that kind of value with the Eagles. A hard-hitting safety who can replace Corey Graham, the Eagles have everything they need right now. There's no need to force a hand and leave them short-handed at safety, an area where, of course, Rodney McLeod is still rehabbing an injury. And finally, the return of 13 personnel. Richard Rogers may not have made much of an impact in 2018 due to injury himself, but the Eagles were forced to run with a lot of 12 personnel, something fans adored, but in 2017, that 13 personnel was such a staple of their offense with Trey Burton and Brent Selleck at the helm. Keeping Richard Rodgers around is huge. It's going to really open up the game for Zach Ertz and Dallas Goddard, so this may seem minor, but it's going to help those young tight ends a lot. And then came the trade. So a three of note, Jordan Howard was the first one where the Eagles gave up a 2020 draft pick for the former Bears running back. Howard is going to take over that bell cow role in this Eagles offense as the workhorse running back that's just going to run straight up the gut. He's smart, he's an intelligent runner, patient, speed isn't on his side, but that's not why the Eagles have signed him here. That's why they drafted Miles Sanders a little later on. Michael Bennett was traded to the New England Patriots, which if we're honest, I think it's a good return. They were never going to keep him around, but replacing that production was something that ultimately became a talking point of the offseason and why that Brandon Graham extension and why that Vinnie Curry re-signing suddenly became so important. 
And of course, finally, a 2019 sixth round pick for wide receiver Deshaun Jackson and a 2020 seventh round pick. It doesn't get much better than that. Djax comes home after an impressive stint in Tampa Bay. The Eagles have needed a speedy number two receiver since the beginning of the Doug Peterson era and until now have been unable to find one. But Jackson, even at age 32, still averaged over 18 yards per reception last year, adding a further 774 to his tally, along with four touchdowns. And while he's going to make 10 million dollars this year, the fact Jason Peters took a pay cut kind of made that possible. So the Sean Jackson is home, Carson Wentz has a legitimate deep threat and this offense is suddenly looking scarier than ever. Into April and it was officially draft season, the most exciting time for the Eagles. But before we got into that, the team made three Alliance of American Football signings. Now while Luis Perez was eventually waived by the team, both Greg Ward and Charles Johnson still remain on the roster, so it's certainly worth taking note of. But next up came the NFL draft and it was a class that Eagles fans could only really be satisfied with. Trading up for the future heir to the left tackle throne cemented the vision in the first round before drafting Miles Sanders with the exact same pick that was once used on LaShawn McCoy. JJ Sega Whiteside is built in the same vein, has the same skill set as old Sean Jeffrey, potentially giving them a future number one receiver, while they continue the train of drafting quarterbacks in each draft, while adding some developmental value in Sharif Miller and a player I'm still really high on, former Colts defensive tackle Hassan Ridgeway, who was acquired in a trade for pick number 246. He could be a real rotational option in the defense this year. The immediate window following the NFL draft, of course, lent itself to the signing of undrafted free agent. And the Eagles came away with quite the haul. Linebackers Joey Alfieri and TJ Edwards both have very good chances of making the roster while 6 foot 5, 350 pound defensive tackle Anthony Rush could be the perfect pile pusher to slot in at that DT4 position. Small school sleeper Jay Liggins is the perfect practice squad candidate while names like Sue Opeta bring intriguing skill sets to the table and will be trying to force their way onto the roster. This is a good haul but it was supported by the moves that followed shortly after the draft. The Eagles went out of their way to bring back Stefan Wisniewski. They knew that Brandon Brooks would be out with that Achilles injury for a little while and there was a chance he'd miss some games. So bringing Wisniewski into the table just sort of alleviates that pressure for now. One of the pro football focused darlings of the last couple of years, Zach Brown was bought in on a one year deal and is one of the players that many Eagles fans are truly excited about. While Cody Kessler will battle Nate Sudfeld and give the Eagles a fantastic grading scale to see just how far along in his development he really is. And then finally to seal the deal, the Eagles put the icing on the cake. They signed Carson Wentz to a monster yet very salary cap savvy contract. While it may seem scary on the surface as we dived into in a previous video, this is a work of art from Howie Rose and then it's going to make life very difficult for teams like the Cowboys and the Rams to pay the likes of Dak Prescott and Jared Goff without overpaying them. Meanwhile, bringing back Blake Counters off waivers was a huge move for Dave Phipps' special teams unit and the signing of Trey Elston finally adds some initial depth to a safety spot that still lacked some. Overall, this was a monumental offseason from the Eagles. A lot of it was focused, as you can see now, around in-house keeping. Whether it was extensions or bringing back free agents or simply filling holes with prove-it deals supported by a very strong draft, you could not have dreamed up a more perfect offseason. Should the Eagles have drafted a safety, that will be the one question that carries into 2019. But if they keep Sendejo around, I really don't see that being too much of a factor. Overall, this was a fantastic offseason and that is how we got from point A to point B. Let me know what you think of this video, guys. From myself, Liam Jenkins, you can follow me at Liam Jenkins PSN. I'll see you next time.